Yeah, it's, it's a little, it's little the mini bee, boardwalk. It's the bee boardwalk. <laughs> there it's you very go. very exciting. Jake was good on his word and came over the next day and we started mulching, clearing the lot and uh, producing some chips to go in all the mud that was all over the place. But it wasn't enough. We needed a lot more mulch. Just so happens the next door neighbor was having a tree taken out. So we asked the landscapers if they would dump their mulch truck and boy did they. So what are you doing, Badger? Well, the little mulcher wasn't going to get us anywhere near enough mulch. so. We ordered in a little extra mulch. With that, we took to taking all the mulch back to the park. After all, we needed to be able to get to the park and work in the park, and it was pretty much all under muddy water. With things a little bit more under control, I set about setting up the fence. Buzz Park was finally starting to come together. Look, this is Buzz Park. This is where we'll put the hives, the two hives. John, where will we put the hives? Well, there's enough room exactly up here there. for about seven hives. So we'll probably put them pretty far apart from each other for starters. Well, we're getting two. Bees what? have a mind of their own. By next spring, we may have more than two hives. Oh my. <laughs> there may be some splits involved. Yeah. Uh, there may be some swarms involved. Oh God. And uh, I'll have to talk to you about the difference in between superseding and swarms. I don't want to see a swarm. Well, I'm you'll see. Of them. You will see it sooner or later, but this entire area has been cleared out How and we're working on fencing. Swarm? It depends where the swarm lands. If it's somewhere close to the ground, like about five or ten feet up, you would normally put a uh, hive super underneath it, along with a little bit of uh, hormone bait if necessary, and uh, try to shake the bees in there. Once the queen enters the hives, most of the bees will just follow her right in. Yes. Yeah. And you can establish a new colony. Wow. Unfortunately, they sometimes land 40 feet up in a tree, and that's you really can't get. What do you do? Well, you have to wait until they fly somewhere else. The swarm, when it lands on a tree, that's just a temporary location. They send scouts out, and they try to find a permanent location. Uh -huh. So you can set what's known as swarm traps, and they're kind of boxes with, you know, comb in them and with right. um, with hormone bait in them and you put it near the swarm and you hope that they go hey that's not a bad place to go where do you get this from acme swarmbox.com <laughs> there's a lot of vendors that send that sell those kind of things uh one of the oldest vendors and i used it actually 30 years ago was dayton and sons and i'm going to be putting in a big order of miscellaneous things from for dayton and sons uh, that include things like nuke boxes, swarm yeah. boxes, and uh, oh boy. some of them are other supplies. I can hardly wait. And this is Coco. This is, Coco is the uh, Buzz Park mascot. And hopefully <laughs> she will not be stung in the process this year. <laughs> I well, think here's where we're at. We got a lot of work yet to do, but, but look uh, at this. It it's looks like there. a boardwalk. Yeah, it's, it's a little, it's little the mini bee, boardwalk. It's the bee boardwalk. <laughs> there you it's very go. exciting. So maybe we should make some little nautical motifs on the hives <laughs> since it's on a boardwalk. Oh, Lord. I'm and very excited. The bees should be here in maybe less than a month. Yeah. So, boy, are you... Ah! You're going to get the... Uh, the re you're going to get the, uh, the film of a lifetime when we're bringing these fuckers home in a car. <laughs> I can hardly wait. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> 